Welcome into Enrique Roca Stadium in Mercia, Spain. International football action. A friendly match between New Zealand and the Democratic Republic of Congo. A lovely evening for football. A first ever meeting between these two nations. And a clash between the number one side currently in Oceania and the African Confederation's 12th ranked nation. New Zealand and the Democratic Republic of Congo set to do battle on what looks to be a fairly pristine playing surface. Just a small smattering of spectators here in Spain for this football friendly. Flag bearers just getting their final instructions as the two teams prepare to take to the field. The friends and family there of the New Zealand side forward to seeing their team in action this evening similarly the Democratic Republic of Congo have some support here in the stands in Spain as well Darren Baisley New Zealand coach taking permanent charge of the side for the very first time he took over from Danny Hay at the end of 2022 has overseen matches against China against Sweden and against Qatar in an interim capacity these two games today and on wednesday against australia his first match is in permanent charge of new zealand's all whites he's been in and around the team for quite some time today he officially is the head coach of the all whites as he sends them into battle against the african nation the democratic republic of congo Here come the officials and the two teams out onto the grass here in Mercia, Spain. Jason Barcelo is our referee. There's Nick Sanev who's got the gloves for New Zealand. New Zealand playing in the all-black strip. The Democratic Republic of Congo tonight will be in all-white with the Red Sox as the two teams prepare for the respective national anthems.
Always a very proud moment to hear your nation's national song ahead of representing that nation in any sport at any venue around the world. The two teams complete formalities and pleasantries before they get set to do battle. Panning along the New Zealand lineup. Great to see a couple of faces we haven't seen in a New Zealand shirt for a while. Sarpreet Singh hasn't worn a New Zealand shirt since January 2022. Here are the two captains. Jason Barcelo is our referee, assisted by Michael Macias and Daniel Gomez. Chris Wood, captain in New Zealand, of course. And Chancel Mbemba, the central defender, has the armband for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Pre-match photos complete. Final preparations being put together there as the New Zealand side. Dick Sanev gets the start and goal. Nico Kerwin plays his first game for New Zealand since last June. Sarpreet Singh, as mentioned, hasn't played for New Zealand since January 2022. Chris Wood is the captain in his 71st international. He and Ben Wayne start together for New Zealand for just the second time. For the Democratic Republic of Congo, Marseille's Chancellor Mbemba is captain in his 71st appearance for his country. 32-year-old Galatasaray striker Cedric Bakambu leads the line. 15 goals for his country. He was on the books of Villarreal here in Spain, where he scored 32 goals in 75 matches. There is Cedric Bakambu. Lionel Mpassi in goal for the Democratic Republic of Congo as we will observe a moment's silence before kickoff here in Spain. Just about set for a start here in this international football friendly. New Zealand will kick from left to right on your screen wearing all black for the Democratic Republic of Congo. They will kick from right to left on your screen in the all white strip with the red socks. New Zealand to kick off their captain Chris Wood over the football. We're underway in Spain. New Zealand's all whites, dressed all in black today against the Leopards, as they are known, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Our neutral venue here in Mercia, Spain, is not unfamiliar to New Zealand. They played here in 2018. There's an early shot across the bow of New Zealand inside 20 seconds. Nick Sarni with an early touch of the football in his gloves. Goalkeepers love that. As I was saying, New Zealand played here in 2018 in a friendly match against Canada, Michael Boxall is the only member of the starting side today who also started that match, but Sarpreet Singh debuted for New Zealand off the bench that day so he'll have happy memories of this ground as he makes his return to the New Zealand side for the first time in a while as the Leopard sees on to a mistake this is Ilya Mishak the left-sided attacker sent back towards his own goal and is it all the way back? It's goalkeeper Lionel Mpassi into a slightly challenging situation, but the Democratic Republic of Congo very comfortable in possession of the football. Their coach is the Frenchman Sebastien de Sabre. See him down there in the red polo shirt. Six substitutes allowed for each side today as is traditional and friendly football. 
Marco Stamanich getting his first touch in central midfield for New Zealand. way that the New Zealand side in particular have set up Chris Wood as per usual as the point of the arrow as it were the centre forward for New Zealand you can see the ball skimming off the surface that has been watered here in Mercia just to make those passes zip across the surface this is Gideon Kalulu for the Leopards switch of play and an effective one as well as New Zealand have a bit of defending to do now. Johnson played into the area. Here's a real chance for the Leopards. And it was Silas Katompo. Shot coming in and Marco Staminich having to do some defending there. The initial shot was Silas Katompo. As the ball fell to him on the edge there. And it actually rebounded off Katompa as he was lining up for the shot. First corner of the game, Theo Bongonda to take for the Leopards. Plays his football with Spartak Moscow and Russia. Short corner routine for the Leopards. Dealt with OK by New Zealand, but there's some more defending to do. Not too much on that one, and Nixanev can watch it sail safely by. Nixon even goal for New Zealand. He debuted for the national side back in 2018. This is his second camp for the All Whites. 1,956 days after he first appeared for the national side. That's a long time between caps one and two. Beinecke gives it away. Clever from Congo is here as Kalulu driving into the area. Bakambu. Kalulu again, now Katompa towards the far post, but once again just a bit too much on it. But Kalulu, Katompa and Bakambu combining well for the Democratic Republic of Congo early in this game. New Zealand haven't had anything in the way of an attacking move just yet, having to soak up some early pressure from their African opponents this evening. Just gone 6 o'clock in the evening local time. Perfect conditions, really, for football. This is Boxel. New Zealand perhaps trying to fashion a little period of possession now. Kakachi looked to have gone out, but assistant referee happy. The Leopards, though, pick it up, and once again, they'll attack down this left-hand side. Over towards the right, Kakachi is there. Takes it away from Mishak. Libby Kakachi, a good run from the Serie A defender. Used to playing at the very highest level. Here come New Zealand into the box. And it was just a bit too far ahead of Eli Just. A promising attack down the left. It's an eye-catching combination, that one. Kakachi and Just, the left-sided players for New Zealand, have combined effectively in the past. Once again, looking to perhaps create something. This is Dylan Batubinsika. Kalulu Batubinsika again. Just his fourth cap for his country. Silas Katompa showing out early in the 11 shirt for the Leopards, but it's taken away from him. Now here is Sapreet Singh. He is a sight for sore eyes for New Zealand football fans. One of the most creative players of this generation. Missing for so long from football for his club and country. With a niggly injury and then some other issues which kept him from the football field. All Whites fans will be delighted to see him back out there. Kakachi earns New Zealand's first corner of the contest. Starting to get a bit of a feel for the game now. New Zealand, Libby Kakachi earning cap number 16 his country tonight Callum McCowart 
McCowart and Kikachi, former teammates at the Wellington Phoenix and Australasia's A-League men's. Towards the near post, defended well by the Leopards. Comes out to Just. Now McCowart. Kikachi. And now Kerwin. Singh. This is better from New Zealand. And towards Wood. Rebounds to Sapreet Singh. Onto his favoured left foot. Couldn't line up the shot. Just. McCowart's in the area. And defended well by the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they eventually get it away. We welcome you in around the world. Wherever you may be watching this broadcast, far and wide, getting messages from all over the place. Former under-20 national coach Des Buckingham has joined us from Mumbai in India. Great to have you along with us, Des. I know there are New Zealand fans all around the globe and those from the Democratic Republic of Congo as well watching the action. New Zealand have certainly settled into this game. It was all the Leopards early, but New Zealand have got a good sustained period of possession. Staminich, what a ball out to Just. Kakachi is raiding into the area it goes, but the finishing touch not going to be applied. Just again. And it'll be another corner for New Zealand. So that left side of New Zealand's attack is really functioning well. Eli Just, the 23-year-old, playing these days at AC Horsens in Denmark. Showing out early. Brian Bielli there doing the defending. Quick corner routine from New Zealand. Shot comes in, and it's a fantastic save. Really good save from Lionel Mbasi. And he issues some instructions to his defenders. First real chance for New Zealand as the shot came in. Lionel Mbasi. Plays his football in France. Got a big right hand to it and diverted it wide. Another opportunity for New Zealand, though, as Sapreet Singh's gone across to bend this one in. Left-footed, plenty of teammates to aim it for. And then the header. That time it was Ben Wayne. He has, though, taken a deflection off the defender. And another corner results. Mando Bainika looking for his first New Zealand goal. Sing again towards the near post. Away by Congo. New Zealand get it back though. Here's their captain, Chris Wood. It's with just again. Unfortunately, this time he can't fashion the cross. So the Leopard's able to relieve a bit of pressure. Eli Just, born and raised in Palmerston North. His dad used to drive him to Wellington twice a week for training and for games at the Ole Football Academy when he was just 14 years old. He played there with Callum McCowan, who's also out on the pitch this evening. Here is Singh. In towards Wood. Little touch off. Ben Wayne not able to seize upon it. Sarpreet Singh is showing out early here for New Zealand. Oh, how they've craved his creative influence in recent times. He is really one of the only players from New Zealand right now who can do the things that he can do. He's a natural number 10, just sitting in behind the strikers. So they've been troubled on this occasion as it came through. Silas Katompa, though, an 11 for the Leopards. They'll have to be careful of him, bottom of screen. Recently clocked as the fastest player in the Bundesliga, reaching speeds of 36 kilometres per hour. So certainly pace to burn for Silas Katompa. Here's Kerwin. His pass misses its mark. Little nibble at the heels there. The Sarpreet Singh on Samuel.
Montesami helps him to his feet. Free kick results. This is Theo Bongonda. The Leopards having soaked up a period of pressure from New Zealand. Looking to build something of their own, but here's Staminic. He's uh, fouled in midfield. That'll be a free kick. Marco Staminic plays his club football for Savanaz Vesda, or Red Star Belgrade, as they were otherwise known. Have won the last six straight Serbian Super League titles. Playing Champions League at the moment as well. Here's Panika, another graduate from the Ole Football Academy in Wellington's northern suburbs. Sligo Rovers in Ireland. Where he's playing this football. Staminich also from Ole. Through towards Ben Wayne, and he's out on the edge of the area as Lionel Mbassi. Kalulu, the switch of play. New Zealand looking very organised. Chris Wood, as you can see, right of screen is the sole man up top when New Zealand are out of possession. They work hard to win it back and have done again. Feinecker and Boxel, who just seems to get better with age, Michael Boxel. One of the fittest men going around, even at the age of 35. Plays just about every game for Minnesota United in the MLS. Let's look at this chance again. It was McCowart. And... Lionel Mpasi denying him, probably not going in, but Mpasi was just making sure. Staminic in the midfield exchanges again. We'll go out for a throw. You can see Staminic wearing some strapping around the left wrist there. Doesn't seem to be troubling him too much in terms of the robust exchanges in the engine room. Passi. Kalulu. Ben Wayne puts pressure on. Haven't uh, been able to get into the game too much early on. Ben Wayne, the Plymouth Argyle striker. Boxel tidies up. Now Staminich with a bit of room to work in. Forward towards Wood. Nice touch off towards Singh. Forward again towards Chris Wood. Wood's in the area, but he's bundled off the ball. It's good defending. Really good defending at the back there by Chancellor Mbemba. But once again, New Zealand catching the eye with these clever little passing moves just in and around the attacking third. Singh involved. In towards Wood. And just as it looked as though he might pull the trigger, trigger it was the captain of the Leopards, Chancellor Mbemba. Vastly experienced. 71st international tonight. In fact, both he and Wood are playing game 71 for their country tonight. Mbemba at Olympic Marseille in France. Foul there on Bakambu, who dropped quite deep the centre forward to try and get himself in the game. 15 minutes gone here in Mercia. No score. New Zealand certainly have had the better of the last 10 minutes. It was the Democratic Republic of Congo early, but New Zealand have caught the eye with some attacking moves. The one shot which Mpasi parried. Boxel. Now Kerwin. Now a chance for Ben Wayne to use his pace, but can control it down the right-hand side under pressure from Gideon Kalulu. So no joy just yet for Ben Wayne. And this is ninth international. Dan's got a nice feel about it. This is Batubansika. Now Mbemba. Bielli. And 
Once again, New Zealand to snuff out attacks before they get anywhere near Nick Sanev's goal. Bongonda. Tatubin Sika brings it forward. Bongonda again. Asking Katompa to use that pace of his, and there it is, we've mentioned it before, 36 kilometres an hour. He gets up and down quickly. Nico Kerwin, though, the equal of him. And McCowitt's back helping out. Wayne is bundled over. Free kick coming the way of New Zealand. They soak up the pressure well. Kalulu through the back of Wayne. Just five survivors in the New Zealand side from the 11 that started their last international, the game that was abandoned at halftime back in June against Qatar. Boxel, Beinecke, Kakachi, Stamanich and McCowitt all started that game. There is Kakachi into Stamanich. Once again, the left side is the one that New Zealand probes. McCowitt's out there. Stamanich into the penalty area. Bit too much on it. And as Singh was arriving from that number 10 position, wearing the number 10 shirt, Sapreet Singh. Another who featured for the Wellington Phoenix early in his footballing journey. Pickle plays it down the line. That's Charles Pickle. Katompa. The Leopards seeing if they can get some change perhaps down this right hand side. New Zealand's left is secure with Kakachi. Used to playing week in and week out against some of the world's best players in Serie A for Empoli. And what's the referee seen here? Free kick for New Zealand. In the eyes of Jason Barcelo. Singh gets a shot on the back there. Referee decides to let play on as New Zealand are in possession through Beinecke. Now Boxel decides to step into midfield. Michael Boxel, an elegant runner. Ben Wayne peels out towards right wing. Kalulu is there ahead of him. And does well, actually, Gideon Kalulu to get that away under pressure from Wayne. Still got some defending to do, though, the Leopards. And that nicked off the shin of Wayne. So now it goes for a Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo throw. I think it was New Zealand who picked it up. Kerwin. Singh offered, but Kerwin declined the offer. <laughs> bit of sweat on the hands there of Nico Kerwin as he attempted to take that throw. He'll have another go at it. And another. Cap number nine this evening for Nico Kerwin, the Italian base player. Sapreet Singh moves away from a couple of defenders. Was he fouled? No, the ball just got away from him. But looking to get heavily involved. Now break down the other end for Pakambu. He's a bit of a lone ranger at the moment. Cedric Pakambu waiting for reinforcements. Gets it now from Katompa. Straight at Nick Sanev. Silas Katompa letting fly. But Nick Sanev was secure. Straight at him in all honesty, but the save still had to be made. Here is Pakambu. Freed up Silas Katompa. And the shot straight at the New Zealand custodian. It's a good battle. It's a good feel about the game. Both sides keen to attack, keen to fashion opportunities. Boxel, nice touch from Wood off to Singh. Wayne's off on a run down the right, but offside flag raised. The Democratic Republic of Congo have been to one and, o one, uh, and one only World Cup back in 1974. 
They were known then as Zaire. Not a happy World Cup for them. They lost 2-0 to Scotland, 9-0 to Yugoslavia, and 3-0 to Brazil. They're looking forward to the African Cup of Nations in January of next year. They've been drawn against Zambia, Tanzania, and Africa's number one side, Morocco, in group play. So manager Sebastian de Sabra very much with his eyes on the African Cup of Nations. Following this game, <laughs> the Leopards have a clash with Angola on Tuesday evening. Ball into the area, Chris Wood was lurking about. And Mbemba again showing himself to be a very composed defender and captain of the side, Chancel Mbemba. Still there for New Zealand, Mbemba again though is going to clear the lines. Wayne back doing some defending against Katompa. Singh completes the job and shields the ball well. Katompa has to give up the free kick. He's not a big man, Sapreet Singh, but has always been a player who's able to use his body to the greatest effect, both in shielding the ball as he did then. Moving away from players in the attacking third. Coming deep to get this one. No way forward, so Sanev is the outlet. So back four for New Zealand today. Kerwin, Boxel, Beinecke, Kakachi from right to left. They have in the past tried different combinations under Darren Baisley, their coach. Sometimes used three central defenders. It's the back four today. Starmanich sitting just in front of them. Kerwin with a rather hopeful ball forward. Chris Wood will challenge. And had come from an offside position and he gestures to Nico Kerwin that perhaps there might have been a better option to go back across the back four and out the other side. There's Chris Wood. Let's see. He's beyond the last defender there. New Zealand have a second game, of course, in this international window. Highly anticipated clash against Australia's Socceroos on Tuesday evening at Brentford. The Soccer Ashes will be on the line. The first time they've been up for grabs since 1954. A silver-plated razor case carried at Gallipoli and containing the ashes of cigars enjoyed by Socceroos captain Alex Gibb and Kiwi skipper George Campbell after the first meeting between the two sides on Australian soil in June of 1923. That uh, silver-plated case was lost for seven decades. Found earlier this year and will be on the line when New Zealand play Australia on Tuesday evening at Brentford. For those in and around that part of the uh, part of the world, there are still some tickets available, I understand, for that match. 25 minutes gone here, though, in Spain. No score between New Zealand and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Not for lack of trying. Both goalkeepers have seen a bit of action at their respective ends. Sanev. Made a couple of tidy saves. Staminage. Beinecke. Now Kakachi. Lever from Staminage as he combines with McCowett. Singh has it taken off him on halfway. Unfairly says the referee who was in close attendance, Jason Barcelo. Not sure that Samuel Montesami necessarily agreed with the assessment of the referee. He thought it was a clean win. And uh, from that angle, he may have had a case. Looks like we're going to have a drinks break here, are we? 
as the players come together after 26 minutes of warm evening immersion in Spain. And the temperature reaches a certain level. Drinks breaks are mandatory. There's Darren Baisley there, just to the left of screen, and the white cap is Simon Elliott, the iconic former New Zealand player, key member of that 2010 side that went to the World Cup in South Africa. Glenn Moss is also part of this New Zealand coaching setup. He went to that World Cup as well. Didn't get to play with Mark Paston playing all three matches. The wet towels being handed out, the advice being issued. There is Elliott to the right of screen in conference with Stamanich, McCowart, and Singh. Here is Pakumbu with uh, an early shot for the Leopards. This one was a funny old piece of action as it rebounded off a couple of players and almost tested Sanev. Callum McCow with the best chance for New Zealand, a curling effort. Tipped around the post by Mpasi. As you can see from that angle, probably not creeping in. A couple of corners for New Zealand. Chris Woods got into some promising positions. Sapreet Singh has been prominent, as has Stamanich. Ben Wayne just trying his best to fashion something. Singh's little ball into Wood there. And Bemba taking it away from the New Zealand skipper as the two captains came together. Once again, a ball drifted towards the Leopards' goal. And then the shot from Katompa. Nick Sanev tested for perhaps the uh, most serious time in the first half hour or so here. We're back underway. These two sides have never played one another in a football international. Rare, actually, for New Zealand to face African opposition. The last time they did so was a match against the Gambia back in November of 2021. A 2-0 win that day with Chris Wood scoring both goals. The Democratic Republic of Congo's most recent game, a 1-0 loss in a friendly against South Africa last month. This one's fallen the way of Wood. Just as outside, just along the carpet. Lionel and Bussy untroubled. As mentioned, the game's got a nice open feel to it. Montesami. Now, Bielli. Both teams have a pretty solid idea of the way they want to play the game. Foul there on Bakambu by Beinecke. If you're going quickly, here is Kalulu down the left for the Leopards. Kerwin trying his best to prevent the cross, and he's done pretty well, Nico Kerwin, on that occasion. Montosami. Leopards will try their luck down the right-hand side. Kakachi in the way over there at the moment. Bongonda. Clever little interplay. Bakambu. But New Zealand snuff it out. And Chris Wood does well to draw the foul from Mbemba. Half an hour gone. Both sides seeking the game's first goal. Wood looking to combine with Singh, who's once again done terrifically well. Sapreet Singh and is fouled as he heads down the right-hand side. Without wanting to labour the point, New Zealand have missed Sapreet Singh in national colours. He's not happy with the way he was manhandled that time by Charles Pickle. Free kick though, which sings
will address. New Zealand have committed some resource forward into the penalty area, waiting for Singh's delivery. Towards the far post, and Tim again, unfortunately. Leon Allen Bussey looks a very solid goalkeeper for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Kalulu. And again, linking with Mishak, who's come across to the left-hand side to try his luck. We haven't seen a lot of Ilya Mishak in the first half hour or so. He's been out on the right, has come across to the left-hand side to try and get involved in the action. Biele. No way forward for the Africans. Bimba. Very comfortable on the ball, but it's given away by the Leopards. And New Zealand might look to attack down the left-hand side. It is Kikachi. Tries to link with Singh, can't. And the move breaks down. It looked promising when Libby Kikachi drove into the attacking third. New Zealand tried to win it back, but the play by Meshak. Good slick passing now by the Leopards, who might have an opportunity down the right-hand side. Good sliding intervention there by Panika. Still there, though, for DR Congo. Now the shot comes in. And just wide, the net ruffled. And just for a moment, it looked as though that shot might have snuck in Nick Sanev's left-hand post. Theo Bongonda was the man cutting inside Kakachi and letting fly. Wrong side of the post for Theo Bongonda. Sanev, you fancy, would have had his near post covered. Didn't have to make the save in the end, but a warning shot from Theo Bongonda. Both coaches will be relatively happy with what they've seen in the first 34 minutes here. Plenty of attacking intent. New Zealand in particular have been fairly solid defensively. That last shot from, from Gonda notwithstanding. Darren Baisley will be relatively happy with the way that they've repelled most of the Leopards' advances. So to Sebastian de Sabra who has this side set up pretty effectively to deal with anything New Zealand are throwing their way. They'll try again now through Macau, who's heading down a bit of a cul-de-sac. Nice play by Staminich, and then Macau switches it across to Kerwin. Macau in central midfield. This pass was aimed for just, but as he played the pass, he was fouled, Callum McCowan. Thirteenth international for Callum McCowan, couple of goals, including one against Sweden earlier this year. Just clipped there as he got the pass away by Cedric Bakambu. the final 10 minutes of regulation time at the end of this first half. Boxel. Planica. Sanev quick to release Kakachi. Now Waters peeled away. Kakachi again. And towards the six yard area, Ben Wayne was there or thereabouts. Early ball from Kakachi looking for Wayne who Holds up the hand in acknowledgement of the idea. Up, 
hasn't had a heck of a lot of game time in recent times Ben Wayne for Plymouth Argyle in England He'll be relishing the chance of a start for New Zealand Otosami unable to keep that one in so New Zealand with another chance to fashion something through Singh who's looked the most likely Staminic nice little shift of body position from Marco Staminic but Ball into Macau, it was taken away from him. Kerwin back and heading back towards his own goal. Has to be a bit careful here, Nico Kerwin, ball given away. Here come the Leopards through Bongonda. And high and wide that one. From Charles Pickle. Yet to score a goal for his country, Charles Pickle, just his third international though. His eyes lit up there with a shot from distance. Up. Now Wayne. And Passy all the way out on the edge of his area. Singh. Links well with Kakachi. Forward now towards Chris Wood. Can he get it out from under his feet? But the answer is no as Batubinsika takes it away. But it's now there with Kakachi. Thought about the shot. Brings Justin instead. And towards Wood. Off the studs of Chris Wood. Is it still there for New Zealand? Bouncing around and whistle's gone. Handball. As that was in and around Chris Wood. He used an arm. In fact, it was McCowick there. He was in the action, and it was his arm that it struck. Michael Boxall, good positional awareness there from a highly experienced centre-back for New Zealand. <laughs> Chancellor Mbemba has marshalled his defence well. Bongonda. Kikachi goes across to defend. Beinecke completes the job. There's Bielli there who attempted the cross. Diego Bongonda looks an interesting player on the ball now. Seems to pop up all over the place. The number 10 for the Democratic Republic of Congo seems to have been given a free roll, as is often the case with number 10s. We're looking to put pressure on Batubinsika, but we deal with it okay. Just a small <coughs> moment of concern there for Leonel and Passi, but. He got out of it okay. The Leopards finishing the first half strongly. Is there a chance now for the shot from Mishak? Instead, he brings in Kalulu. Mishak again. Good block by Staminic. Still there, though, for the Leopards. Bielli tried to play it in. Headed away by McCowart. Well, 
the Africans started the game the stronger and they're finishing the first half in the same fashion four minutes plus stoppages for New Zealand to negotiate I'll be pleased New Zealand their opposition are 40 places higher in the latest FIFA rankings for what they're worth Sanev without any problems claiming that one but New Zealand have defended well for the most part Dangerous attack as the likes of Pakambu, Katompa, Bongonda haven't had a heck of a lot to get excited about. Any attacking moves they have created have been snuffed out by good solid New Zealand defending. Similarly at the other end, Mbemba and Batu Binsika, a solid central defensive pairing for the Leopards. Both look very composed players with ball at feet. Happy enough to play the ball between themselves. Otosami dropping into lend assistance as Dia Congo come again down their right. Chris would look to put a bit of pressure on, but again that rear guard for Dio Congo does the job and to Sami target over here was Mishak Kerwin got a bit of an arm in the face there as he completed the defending Ilya Mishak entirely in agreement the Swiss based Swiss based attacker Darren Baisley just having a word with Ben Wayne into the technical area. Here's Darren Baisley, as mentioned previously, his first game in official charge of New Zealand as Kerwin goes down again. Play left to be stopped. Kerwin's just returned from a long-term injury. Just came off second best in that aerial challenge. You get a bit of assistance. The last time Nico Kerwin played for New Zealand was in the Intercontinental Playoff against Costa Rica in June of last year. Long-term injury which kept him out of club action. Right back's been a uh, position of some interest for New Zealand in recent times. There's never really been any player who's locked down that spot. Nico Kerwin's played there reasonably regularly. Others have been tried. Bill Tuiloma, who was probably more a centre back by trade, has on occasion played right full back for New Zealand. Others, the likes of Daningham, Storm Roo, who hasn't had a look in for a while. Even Tim Payne, another who plays most of his football at club level at centre-back, is a right-back option. Kerwin's back on his feet and ready to go again as we tick towards the end of regulation time. There'll be some added time, obviously, for the drinks break and the other stoppages we've had. Just the two extra minutes to be added here at the end of this first half. A closely fought contest between two unfamiliar footballing foes. Is there a final chance for New Zealand perhaps? Boxel. Kerwin back in the action. Wayne. Not a lot of space to work with down there for Ben Wayne, and he's not able to retain possession under pressure. A difficult half in many respects for Ben Wayne. 
And for Chris Wood. Sapreet so Singh's just drifted out of the game in the last 10 minutes. Hasn't been quite as prominent as he was early. Chance in 30 seconds or so for the teams to go inside and recalibrate. Here's Kikachi breaking forward. Singh. Into Eli Just. Here's a chance. A cross goal from Eli Just. Ben Wayne was lurking around the far post. Hands to the head of Eli Just. Ball slid into him from Sapreet Singh. Lovely pass there from Singh. And the little touch off Lionel Impassi just diverted it away from Ben Wayne. But a corner results. The two minutes have elapsed, but there will be time for this final set piece for New Zealand. Wouldn't they love to go in a goal ahead, perhaps, from this situation? Sing to deliver. Punched away by keeper Lionel Mpasi. Once again, a New Zealander has found themselves in the thick of the action. Ben Wayne this time has come off second best in that challenge. Challenging with Impassi there, might have got uh, some of Impassi's punch. Uh, ben Wayne's going to receive some assistance, which will elongate this first half. A great example there, again, in the last couple of minutes of Sapreet Singh's influence on this side, his ability to unlock defences with sure footed passes in and around the penalty area. Eli just the beneficiary on that occasion. So if New Zealand are to find a way through, Sapreet Singh feels like he is the most likely. Chancel Mbemba is keen to help Ben Wayne to his feet. There's quite a bit of concern here for Ben Wayne. He is now back up and Mbemba still hanging around wanting to get him on his feet and help him out both center backs actually in Bemba and Batu Bensika showing a bit of concern for Ben Wayne <laughs> not just uh, be a bit careful with Ben Wayne here anytime the head is involved you've got to be a little bit careful take the right precautions seems okay they'll just uh, Take him off for the meantime. Halftime is approaching. In fact, halftime has arrived here at Mercia in Spain. An entertaining first half between New Zealand and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Both sides have fashioned attacking opportunities. Both sides have repelled the other's advances. Some good chances for both sides, but as yet, no goals to speak of. As the two teams head in under the stands for their instructions at halftime. Some refreshment and ready themselves for battle in the second half. It is halftime here at Estadio Nueva Condomina in Mercia, Spain. The scoreline of New Zealand nil. The Democratic Republic of Congo nil. crowd have enjoyed the first half bit of action at either end as we see the pitch being watered at half time warm evening in Spain small knot of New Zealand fans take their half time refreshments on board as well I'll be reasonably encouraged by what they're seeing from their side Hope, of course, for a goal or two to enjoy in the second stanza. There have been periods of excitement, though, for not only New Zealand, but for DR Congo as well. well some of the high points of the first half. Cedric Bakambu.
innovation means training tomorrow's leaders in the latest technologies. Because we know the next idea to change the future of medicine may well come from them at the Medical University of South Carolina. Innovation is who we are. Giving Kosani uh, an early uh, touch inside the first couple of minutes. Welcome back to Estadio Nuova Condomina in Mercia, Spain. The Democratic Republic of Congo players back out as New Zealand now make their re-entry. Let's check on any half-time changes for either side. Both sides allowed six substitutes today. Interesting to see at the likes of Matt Garbutt. Joey Champness perhaps in an attacking sense for New Zealand get the opportunity. Tyler Binden could get a New Zealand debut today. He is among the substitutes. Unfortunately, the other potential debutant, Matt Dibley Diaz, was with the squad until Thursday when he unfortunately suffered a hamstring strain and had to return to his club Fulham. So his debut will have to wait. Theo Bongonda keen to get things going for DR Congo, who will make a change. Pretty shirt. Grady Diangana will take the place of Ilya Meshek. Diangana plays his football with West Bromwich Albion in England. So just the one change at half time. New Zealand are unchanged as we are underway in the second half. The Democratic Republic of Congo. All in white. With the Red Sox attacking now, the goal to our right. New Zealand in all black, kicking from right to left in this second half. An early chance for Congo, and they are going to score early in the second period. Just 23 seconds gone in the second half. And Cedric Bakambu with his 16th goal for his country. It was a long and hopeful ball in many respects but Cedric Bakambu nipped in and poked it beyond goalkeeper Sanev nipped around the other side and then completed the job here is the long ball from Montosami New Zealand didn't deal with it Bakambu the master goal poacher it was a rather hopeful ball but as Kakachi headed it back towards his own goalkeeper, Sanev didn't come. So a mix-up in defence for New Zealand. And Cedric Bakambu has made them pay. The Democratic Republic of Congo strike very early in the second half. Just the start they would have wanted after the break. And Cedric Bakambu... He's used to playing in Spain, had a long time, a profitable time with Villarreal. These days he plays his football for Galatasaray in Turkey. But happy to be back on Spanish soil and on the score sheet here for the Leopards. Just the start that Darren Baisley wouldn't have been after for his New Zealand side, who'll now have to chase the game.
Happily for them, there's plenty of time to do that. But Bakambu, the goal scorer for the Leopards, early in the second stanza. A cushioned header from Kakachi. Sanev and Kakachi haven't played together very often, so maybe there's some communication. It wasn't quite up to the mark there, regardless of how it all played out. The African nation have taken the lead. New Zealand's response will be very instructive. Here they come again as they look to double their money early in the second half. Some more defending to do for New Zealand, and they just about scramble it away. All hands on deck at the moment. Here is Bongonda. He drives deep and wins a corner off Beinecke. So, New Zealand on the back foot in the second half. The Democratic Republic of Congo well and truly on the front foot. Bongonda will take the resulting corner. Delivery is good, but dealt with by New Zealand. Kakachi at the near post is the man. And Theo Bongonda not able to continue the attacking move. So I'm sure Darren Baisley would have been reasonably satisfied with his side's first half performance, keeping a higher ranked side at bay and scoreless in the first 45, but that sheep was not kept clean for very long in the second half. New Zealand showed enough though in the first half to suggest that they can create opportunities. Look to get Sarpreet Singh on the ball no doubt. As often as they can he looked really good in the first half. Can't quite control that one. Kerwin though is foul. Does he? No. Referee says on your feet Nico Kerwin. Nothing wrong with that. Pineke rakes a pass in the direction of Ilo Just. He is uh, collected by Brian Bielli. A number of New Zealand players have been manhandled on occasion here. A couple of them have spent time down. Kerwin, Wayne and now Just, but he's back on his feet happily. Set piece situation for New Zealand now. Singh and Makawa in attendance Chris Wood the captain and his country's leading goal scorer could be the most obvious it didn't quite sit for Chris Wood as it was bent into the penalty area the 33 goals for New Zealand Chris Wood more than any other male player panic stations for New Zealand nothing close to that there's plenty of time we've only had six minutes in the second half and there is some attacking armory on the bench that Darren Baisley could take advantage of he's got Max Mutta the Shrewsbury town striker Joey Champness who we haven't seen for a while but who adds a different kind of creativity Matt Garbutt is there this one's played through and the flag is up but Kambu didn't agree necessarily with the call he did look a long way advanced, but I think perhaps thought that he'd started his run inside his own half. Let's just watch. He, well, he was certainly in the attacking half.
half and looked from that angle as though he was in an offside position. The assistant referee on this near side certainly had his flag raised nice and quickly. One thing you won't get from New Zealand is panic. These young players are very secure in their own ability. And Chris Wood has tucked it in, but I think that's gone behind. It looked at first look as though it had gone behind from Eli Just as he tried to pull it back. And that is indeed the adjudication here. Just, just not quite able to keep that one in. Clearly it's gone behind. Tidy finish from Chris Wood, but it's not going to count for anything. As we're saying, the uh, modern-day New Zealand footballer is a confident player. They like possession of the football. They like to create. They're not overawed by opposition who are higher up the rankings than they. They're playing in good club environments around the world. This entire team is based outside of Australasia. Coach Darren Baisley electing not to call up any A-League players with the new A-League men's season a week away. So every player in this current squad is based in either Europe, the United States, a couple in Asia. There's Ben Wayne of Plymouth Argyle. Can he win something down in the corner? It's fallen quite kindly for Wayne. Singh in towards Wood, dealt with by the Leopards though and they might now turn defence into attack but Kambu is the goal scorer for Congo he can't seize onto that one it's there though for the new man Grady Dean Garner he has it taken off him as there was in the first half some spice about this game and the challenges that are going in Pickle there with the latest. Singh lets it run to Staminich, who loses his footing. Dean Garner trying to make an impact, the second half substitute. Sebastian De Sabra there up on the edge of his technical area, issuing instructions to his side. Came into the job mid-2022, following the Leopards' failure to qualify for the last Football World Cup. Sebastian De Sabra has well and truly been given his instructions to get this nation to the next Football World Cup in 2026. Howard not able to seize upon that pass. Most of the Leopards' recent matches have been against fellow African sides. The last time they played anybody from outside their confederation was in February of last year against Bahrain. They lost that game, 1-0. Staminich. Clever is Eli Just. Singh just couldn't quite control it at the first time of asking. Has it now? Staminich. Singh again. Nice little touch. And a return pass. Sapreet Singh, lovely. Can he apply the finish, Sapreet Singh? Will he line up? The shot from McCowart. Save from Lionel Impasi. But so clever from Sapreet Singh as he combined with a couple of teammates, was in the area. He favours the left foot, couldn't quite get room for the shot, gave it back to McCowart. That is what Sarpreet Singh can do. He troubles opposition defences inside and outside of the penalty area. That was the latest example of it. Just the one goal for New Zealand, Sarpreet Singh. He's only played nine matches for the national side. But encouraging signs. 
Kakachi raiding down the left is, is his modus operandi. Sing again. Just. Sing goes outside him. Just ignores him. Drifts it into the penalty area. Bit of a push in the back. It looked like from Ben Wayne there. Referee said it was okay. And here come the Leopards again. It is Bongonda bearing down on goal. Theo Bongonda getting back. Michael Boxall using all the experience. All of his pace and fitness. Theo Bongonda. And Michael Boxall together. The ball through from Bakambu. But Michael Boxall all the way tracking him and making sure that no shot was forthcoming. A corner has resulted, though. And there's Michael Boxall, Minnesota United defender, formerly of Wellington Phoenix. Spent some time playing in South Africa as well. Towards the near post. The call is away. It hasn't been cleared. It will be now through Kakachi. Only as far as Bielli, though. And now New Zealand might have the opportunity to break quickly through McCowart. Unfortunately, he can't combine over there with Eli Just. Boxel. Stavanich. Wayne. Into the area. McCowett was the furthest advanced. Just not quite coming together for New Zealand with those balls into the penalty area. Changes coming for the Democratic Republic of Congo. William Balikwisha from Standard Liège is going to enter the fray, as is Jackson Mulika, the Turkish-based number nine. So Silas Katompa's day is done. And Theo Bongonda, who's been impressive, is also withdrawn. No changes as yet for New Zealand. Confirmation of Jackson Mulika's introduction in place of Silas Katompa. Sebastian de Sabra really changing things up in the attacking third. He's withdrawn Ilya Mishak, Theo Bongonda and Silas Katompa. So three of the front four have been replaced. Here's Singh. Wood is quite deep. Kakachi in midfield. Singh on the ball again. Frantic at the moment from New Zealand. Singh was fouled there, was he? By... With the Sami. Referee allows play to go on because New Zealand have the football. Boxel. That was a foul, and Michael Boxel now asks why that ball was kicked away by Cedric Bakambu, who was back doing some defensive work. The upshot is a free kick for New Zealand. Boxel and Bakambu acquainting themselves with one another. The changes are going to come now for New Zealand. Matt Garbutt and Bill Tuiloma are going to be introduced. Tuiloma will take the place of Nico Kerwin, so it feels as though Bill Tuiloma will go into that right-back position as Nico Kerwin makes way. 38th international for Bill Tuiloma, and Matthew Garbutt is going to take the place of Ben Wayne. 
international number 16 for Matt Garbutt playing his football at Nakpareda in the Netherlands. That may well change the shape of New Zealand's attack. We'll get to that in a second. Sapreet Singh. Clever set move from New Zealand across the six-yard area from Beinecke, I think. I think no, it was McCowart. Here's Kakachi. Just Singh. The Leopards deal with it okay. So Matthew Garbutt is a different kind of player to Ben Wayne, and he's looking to get on the ball now. Nice and early, Matt Garbutt. May well change the shape, as I say, of New Zealand's attack. We'll watch that the next time they are down the other end. In the meantime, some defending to do again. Staminich. <laughs> a little bit of... Uh, Ole Ole there from Marco Samanich. Just a mistouch there by Eli Just. Sebastian Tassabra has spent most of this game up on the edge of his penalty area. Just bottom of screen there. 47-year-old Frenchman. He's had a long career managing club sides. Also was in charge of the Ugandan national side for an 18-month period. and Mbemba. Switch of play, Bill Tuiloma's first involvement in the right back position. And his football with Charlotte FC in the United States after a long stint at the Portland Timbers. Bielli. And Bielli again. Dean Garner. Eye catching move here from the Leopards, and they've earned a free kick. The foul on Samuel Montesami. Bielli. Dean Garner. Montesami. Twenty-five minutes to go. Will the Leopards look at some stage to try and see out this result? There's still plenty of time and they still seem to have plenty of attacking intent at the moment. At some point you'd have to think that they'll Be happy to settle for the result that they currently have. Plenty of time for New Zealand, though, as mentioned. <laughs> We'd expect that Matt Garbutt would join Sapreet Singh in a central position. Callum McCowan pushed a bit wider. Dean Garner, he's looked energetic since his introduction. And wins the ball back again. Dean Garner. Bielli. Towards the near post and a stretch from Nando Pineca. Diverting it behind. Cedric Bakambu. Such a key cog in the slippered side. Plays football with a smile on his face. And why wouldn't you? You've got the goal. 
And here's your team into a 1 0 lead. William Balaguisha, one of the new men, Belgian based. A deeper corner, Sanev didn't get any touch on that. Just been well controlled today by Jason Barcelo. Not too much in the way of aggressive challenges to adjudicate upon. He's kept his cards in the pocket. Midway through the second half. What does New Zealand's path back into this game look like? The moment they have to worry about conceding a second as the Leopards put together another move. Matthew Garbutt is unceremoniously dumped to the turf here. Just mentioned there haven't been too many roughhouse tackles or cards, and just as I say that, Grady Diangana receives the first booking of the match. Yeah, it was certainly a bit reckless there from Diangana. Matt Garbutt didn't look best pleased with <laughs> the challenge. Confirmation of the first booking of the match. New Zealand will want to get the ball at the feet of Singh, at the feet of Garbutt. See Matt Garbutt there just in the centre circle alongside the referee. No path for him to receive the ball at the moment, but... He's the kind of player that can make things happen. Broke a long goal-scoring drought for New Zealand in a recent match against China in Wellington. New Zealand had scored for the best part of half a dozen matches. They went ahead through an own goal, and then Matt Garbutt off the bench scored a goal. Into Chris Wood! Flag up on the far side. It will not count for Chris Wood. It looked as though goal 34 for his country had arrived. But the assistant referee had other ideas. It's tight. It's tight. Chris Wood thought he was onside. The assistant referee disagreed. He may just have been a bit too far advanced, Chris Wood, as they take a drinks break and steady themselves, New Zealand for the final assault. And even though that one isn't to count, it'll, get, it'll give them further encouragement. Players take on some hydration on a warm evening here in Spain. Get their instructions from their respective managers. Here's the goal that separates the sides. A long, rather hopeful ball that Kakachi nodded back towards his keeper, Sanev. But it was intercepted by Cedric Bakambu. He anticipated, you could just see, he was watching Kakachi, anticipated that the header would be back towards Sanev. Did the mental calculations. And realised that he had an opportunity to nip in. You can see he just sets off just as he sees Kakachi shaping to head it back to Sanev. That is very clever centre forward play from Cedric Bakambu. And it was rewarded with the game's opening goal. Still had a bit of work to do as well once he nicked it past Sanev. But he collected on the other side and tucked it home. One of the other goalkeepers in the squad that was originally picked for this two-game stretch for New Zealand, Max Crocombe, has been released back to his Burton Albion side 
for their weekend match. He will rejoin the side, though, I understand, for the game against Australia. Similarly, Tommy Smith has left the squad to rejoin his MK Dons side for their match this weekend, but again, he will rejoin the team for the Australian match. Gakachi pulled up for that foul as he came through the back of an opponent. Dean Garner, the recipient. <laughs> Just about nipped in there. The tidying up done though by the Africans. That's clever, but uh, not clever enough to elude Michael Boxall. Seventeen minutes plus stoppages remaining. Loma and Boxall, two of the more experienced members of this side, combined to gain possession or regain it for New Zealand. Here's Matthew Garbutt, he's popping up all over the place. Lovely pass from Garbutt to switch play over towards the right for New Zealand. And they will win a free kick. McCallum wants to get going quickly. Here is Singh. He's got Tui Loma outside and towards Chris Wood. And his touch took him away from goal and then. He wasn't able to get it out from under his feet, the New Zealand skipper. Sanev all the way out of his penalty area to deal with that long ball. As the New Zealand side is drawn from mainly European and United States clubs. So too, this Democratic Republic of Congo side. Just one player in this squad is based in the country. That is uh, one of the goalkeepers, Bajil Siadi. The rest of them are all, for the most part, playing their club football in Europe. country of just over six million and similar in size to New Zealand Bielli has been more involved in this second half up and down the right Dean Garner has been a good inclusion or a uh, good introduction rather for the Leopards Pacumbo trying to free him up there but Dean Garner not able to get on the end of it. Yet to score his first goal. Grady Dean Garner. I think that's hardly surprising because this is his debut. So that's the reason he hasn't scored a goal yet for his country. But he's looked good. Grady Dean Garner. You get the feeling he might get a few. The 25-year-old. Kakachi, just Garbutt, nice little move into space by Matthew Garbutt, led out towards the right, McCowart, no way through at the moment for New Zealand, now they might be through, Tuiloma, ball across the six yard area,
but Kambu the goal scorer. Composed defending again from Boxel. It's belted forward and it'll be easily regained by the Leopards. Coming out now, Bakambu, lovely move from Cedric Bakambu. Already one goal this evening, looking for a second. He's just got a bit of extra class about him, Cedric Bakambu. Just that little move into space, and he nicked it past. Pineke made room for the shot. The end product, perhaps not what he was after, but everything in the lead up including that little flick there from Charles Pickle. Very eye-catching. Michael Boxer did well to force Pakambu wide. So New Zealand rolling the subs now. We're going to see Max Mutter and Joey Champness into the action. Champness taking the place of Eli Just. Simon Banzer also to the action for the Leopards, replacing the excellent Cedric Bakambu. Dalton Wilkins is also making his way on, so triple sub. Max Mutters into the action for Sapreet Singh. Dalton Wilkins, who was called into the squad as a late replacement for the injured James McGarry, is going to earn his third cap for Max Mutter. It is game number five for New Zealand. Hasn't yet scored a goal for New Zealand, Max Mutter. This will be a good opportunity to do that. As we see Dalton Wilkins, the Danish-based left-back. Straight swap for Libby Kikachi there on the left side of New Zealand's back foot. Wilkins in to the action almost immediately. As is Champness. Back to Wilkins. This is great from the substitutes. Really good early impact. And Max Mutter was on the end of that as well. So that's the way to make an impact. Sebastian de Sapa sitting down for one of the only times this evening as we tick towards the 80 minute mark. Champness. Always keen to take players on, Joey Champness. No way through on that occasion. Champness debut for New Zealand 2021. The win over Bahrain, his seventh cap tonight. Currently based in Turkey. So do New Zealand have it in them to find an equaliser here? They've scored in each of their last three matches, having endured that drought I mentioned before of six games without any goals have scored in their last three including the abandoned match against Qatar Champness looking to make an early impact and he's doing it well Garbutt couldn't quite bring Tuiloma into the action it's the danger is for New Zealand as they push men forward that they do leave themselves perhaps a little bit exposed at the back but I often say in a friendly match, if you're going to lose 1 0, you might as well lose 2 0. It doesn't really make that much difference. A chance now, though, for the Leopards again. It's one of the new men. He can't get the shot away. Simon Banzer 
Another on debut. That would have been a way to uh, mark your debut with an early goal. Simon ba Banza, the Portuguese-based striker. Balakwisha. Here they come again. The Leopards and the shot just wide from Grady Diangana. He has really made an impact since his introduction, Grady Diangana. Looks like the kind of player who will feature many more times for his nation. Chris Wood doing his best to create something. Eight minutes plus stoppages remaining here in Spain. Banzer. Certainly taking up the position that Cedric Bakambu occupied for much of the game. Good tackle by Wilkins. He's had a good introduction. Dalton Wilkins. Yet another who came through the Ole Football Academy. Max Mata looking to put pressure on Lionel Mpassi, who hasn't had much to do really in the second half. New Zealand haven't created as many chances in the uh, second half as they did in the first in terms of clear-cut opportunities that Lionel Mpassi has had to deal with. Banza and Beinecke together. And Simon Banza, a judge to have committed the foul. The balance of the game, New Zealand probably deserve a goal. Possession and territory stats are fairly even. Just while we were looking at that replay, something's obviously happened because that free kick hasn't come to anything. New Zealand back in action on Tuesday evening when they'll take on Australia. Brentford, the Australians preparing for a game in the next couple of hours against England at Wembley. Big occasion for the Socceroos. Not too much on that one. New Zealand want to get going quickly. Wilkins. Pineke. Continue to probe down this left-hand side and bring Joey Champness in. A bit of room for Joey Champness to run into now. A few step-overs. Tries to slide it sideways towards Max Mata. So the first part of that looked promising from Joey Champness, couldn't supply the pass, but he's back on the ball now. However, Wilkins has committed the foul, and the Leopards will be able to release the pressure valve just a bit. Another sub coming. And a special moment for Tyler Binden. It is a New Zealand debut for the 18-year-old Reading defender. Tyler Binden with an international debut. He is the son of former Football Ferns goalkeeper Jenny Binden. His dad, Grant, was a New Zealand volleyball representative. In fact, captained the side. And both parents I understand are in attendance here to watch their son on debut Tyler Binden, special moment for him mm -hmm. 
and towards Mpasi. So time is beginning to become the enemy of New Zealand. First piece of action for Tyler Binden. Seems to have solid into it. The right side of New Zealand's defence. Starmanich has dropped quite deep. Tuiloma has been pushed forward. Clever into play here with Champness involved. Starmanich. Garbutt is fouled. Takes it quickly. On to Chris Wood. Woods in the area. Goes down. That is a penalty. Jason Barcelo with no hesitation. They argue and they'll continue to protest, but it won't matter. Jason Barcelo will not be changing his mind. Chris Wood bundled over in the penalty area and New Zealand have a penalty. Here it is again. Certainly no contact on the ball there. as Chris Wood used his body effectively to take it away from Gideon Kalulu. Kalulu committing the foul. New Zealand's protests were heeded, and Chris Wood. Well, it was very clever thinking. The quick free kick taken by Garbutt into the path of Chris Wood. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo players continue to surround the referee they're going to make another change just to perhaps delay this freak uh, this penalty rather Ido Kayembe from Watford in England is waiting to make his entrance the Africans are still protesting the innocence of the challenge Charles Pickle making way as we tick into the final minute of regulation time. Is there a lifeline here for New Zealand? A goal that their performance probably deserves if Chris Wood can convert from the spot. It's confirmation of Kiyembe's entrance in place of Pickle. Max Mata and Chancel Mbemba, an animated conversation here. Mbemba is absolutely apoplectic about the awarding of this penalty. However, it is to be Chris Wood, New Zealand's captain, looking to net a late equaliser from the penalty spot. It's Wood against Impassi. Goal number 34 for New Zealand. For Christopher Wood, the captain of his country. And it has drawn New Zealand level and added time here in Spain. 1-1. Chris Wood. He's so often the man who supplies the finishing touch for New Zealand's attacking moves or a goal when one is needed the most. And it was needed here, and he heeded the call. Chris Wood scores. 1-1 here in Spain. A very composed finish from the penalty spot, sending Lionel Impassi the wrong way. And New Zealand look as though they are going to take something from this match. They're keen now to perhaps find a winner. Darren Baisley is up, urging his team forward. Dalton Wilkins wants to get going. No thought at all of sitting back at 
They want a winner. Wilkins hurls it towards Wood. It's flicked off at Leopard's defender's head. And Parsi comes together. For new businesses, Fiverr Freelancers is like a backbone. You can find anything. My name is Jimmy Valentin, and I'm the founder of Jubal Talents. I've seen musicians go through a lot, and this app will really help them. Well, working with Fiverr, it was pretty easy. All I did was log on. I went on search. I typed in app development. I found freelancers. I picked the one that would fit my budget and the one that had great reviews. I got exactly what I wanted with just one click. Join Fiverr today and get something going. of six extra minutes there may well be more added because there are a couple of minutes while the penalty was being prepared to be taken where there wasn't much action so quite a bit of time left lovely from Champness she what a lovely little flick over his head and a collect this is what Joey Champness can do and this is why Darren Baisley was so keen to get him back involved just the uncertainty he can place into the minds of opposition defenders plenty of little tricks and flicks in the locker of that man Joey Champness a little flick over the head there of Bielli another clever piece of footwork there that's something New Zealand fans haven't seen for a while Joey Champness in the international wilderness for a while but a welcome addition back into the fold now Foul by Pineka. I get the feeling he's going to get a yellow card for that. And uh, Pineka. That was shown the way of Chris Wood. Felt as though that was the foul by Pineka that Jason Barcelo had seen. It's that one there. So I get the feeling that's what the booking is for, even though Chris Wood was in the vicinity when the yellow card was issued. Seems it's very much Nando Pineka's booking. So New Zealand, having fought so hard to get back into this match, will not want to give it up now. A real confidence boost that they've had to come from behind. There's the confirmation of the booking for New Zealand's Nando Beinecke. But New Zealand, now that they have something from this match, will not want to lose it at the last. They will, though, want to perhaps go again. Switch of play across towards the left-hand side. Champness. Outside of the right foot from Joey Champness. Always a fan of the unorthodox. Brian Bielli, well aware. We've had four of the extra six minutes minimum. Darren Paisley, animated there on the bench. Wilkins again with the long throw. Into the penalty area. Half cleared. Only as far as Garbutt. Tui Loma helps it back in. Here's Max Marta! What a save by Impassi. Crucial save from Lionel Impassi as Max Marta stole in. Looking for his first goal for New Zealand. Tui Loma's clever first time ball. Max Marta with the header. Lionel Impassi says you shall not pass today. Max Marta. Crucial piece of goalkeeping. But New Zealand coming home with a wet sail here. Max Mata's eyes would have lit up as that fell to him in the penalty area. But can the Leopards create a chance at the last? No is the answer. This one's helped forward and Max Marta gives up the chase on that one fairly early as he realised he wasn't going to get anywhere near it. Is there a final chapter to be written in this game?
Stamanich picks it up. Beinecke. Wilkins cuts inside. Dalton Wilkins. Woods in the area. He slides it sideways. Here's Chris Wood. Corner. Although a goal kick, I think, has been given. I thought that, that took a deflection. Not to be. But Dalton Wilkins it was that time. Gee, the subs have made an impact, haven't they, down this left-hand side. And that'll be the final action of what has been a very entertaining football friendly here in Spain. Cedric Bakambu scoring just after half time for the Democratic Republic of Congo. But late in the piece, Chris Wood earned and then converted a penalty for New Zealand to give us a final scoreline here this evening of New Zealand 1, the Democratic Republic of Congo 1. Well, there'll be a high degree of satisfaction in the New Zealand camp that they have come from behind to secure a draw here against a side ranked 40 places higher in the world. A side that caused them issues, but a side that they also caused issues for. Good impact off the bench from a number of players from both sides. Clever thinking in the lead up to the penalty being awarded. Matthew Garbutt sliding a free kick very quickly through into the path of Chris Wood, who used all his experience to draw the foul, earn the penalty, and then he got back up and converted that penalty for his 34th goal for New Zealand. He extends his lead at the top of the standings as far as New Zealand men's goal scorers are concerned. In his 71st international, his 34th international goal has been enough to give New Zealand a 1-1 draw here. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of the second half. Seems an age ago that Libby Kakachi cushioned the header back towards Nick Sarnev that Cedric Pakambu seized upon to open the scoring in this game. That was only about 20 seconds after the start of the second half. Very, very clever from Bakambu, great awareness. You just watch him, have a look at Kakachi there, sees what Kakachi is planning and scuppers those plans. The Leopards number 17 by nipping in, nicking it past Sanev and applying the finish from a tight angle. That is excellent centre forward play from Cedric Bakambu, his 16th goal for his country to the delight of his teammates. And there's the incident that led to the equaliser. Chris Wood bundled over in the penalty area by Gideon Kalulu. There were vehement protests from Kalulu, from Chancel Mbemba, and from several others. But it was Chris Wood who very, very calmly slotted home from the penalty spot to bring New Zealand back level at 1-1 and send them on to Brentford midweek for a trans-Tasman clash against Australia with some confidence. You can't say they didn't deserve it, New Zealand. They played their part in an entertaining game. They created chances. They kept on pushing. They got major impact from their substitutes. The likes of Joey Champness, Dalton Wilkins,